Is it a good idea to purchase the Blackview MP100 Mini PC in 2025 for general day-to-day -day computing tasks as well as some light gaming? Let's find out! Let's unbox the Blackview MP100 Mini PC and take a look at its design and features. When new, it comes shrink-wrapped. Let's remove that, shall we? Nice little box. In terms of specifications, the MP100 comes with the AMD Ryzen 7 5825U processor. This is Zen 3 architecture, 8 cores, 16 threads. And it has integrated AMD graphics as well. 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. Let's open it up. A little bit of foam to protect the mini PC during shipping. And here it is. But first, let's take a look at what comes in the box with it. User manual in English. Good illustrations. And there is a few more languages. Let's see what else we get. Power supply. How many watts is that? Let's see. That's 65 watts. Some screws. Power cord. UK socket. And this is HDMI. Although it's not really a long cable, is it? I just measured it and the HDMI cable is exactly one meter long. That is slightly more than three feet for my American friends. Although if the mini PC is sitting on your desk, because I think that's where it should be, then you don't really need a long cable to connect it to your monitor. Doesn't matter <laughs> which side, it's still enough, so that's fine. And this right here is a face mount bracket. You can use it to attach it to the mini PC and just hang it at the back of your monitor if you want to do that. That's what the bracket is for. And these are the screws for this bracket. Let's take a look at the mini PC itself. Pull this to unpack it, I believe. Yes. There we go. Nice gunmetal gray color. Looks beautiful. Vents at the bottom, rubber feet to ensure stability. So that's, you know, even if it's pushed, <laughs> it stays in place. Thanks to these feet, the PC will not be sliding around your desk. Connectivity is pretty good on this mini PC. At the front we get audio jack, one USB type A, 
and two USB Type-C ports. These are 10 gigabit ports. It's not the fastest, but they also support video display connectivity up to 4K 60 Hz, which is nice. And at the back we get our power connection, HDMI, display port, 1 gig LAN and two USB type A ports. Here is what it looks like as part of my setup. Sitting right next to the monitor right there. Looking good. Doesn't take up much space on the desk. I must admit I'm not too happy with the noise levels at just you know, normal browsing. I'm just browsing the verb. Browsing some news, okay. Nothing too special, nothing too intensive. The CPU is working at something like 20 to 60% depending on uh, the situation. All right. And I can already hear the fans. Let's take a listen. There's our CPU utilization. Yeah, as you can see, it's not gonna be completely silent sitting on your desk. Even when you're doing just light stuff, such as the browsing. So it's a little bit disappointing, but it's not like it's loud. It's just the fan noise is there. If you're used to just doing this in complete silence, then you might be bothered by that as I am, because normally I'm using a MacBook to do this kind of thing. And MacBooks, they stay completely silent. But if you're listening to music or watching videos, then it's uh, not a big deal because it's just in the background, that noise disappears quickly as soon as you introduce some other sounds into the room. Now let's do a proper stress test, multi-core test, 10 minutes, Cinebench, that will load the CPU to 100%. Let's see if it does. Indeed, it does. 100% utilization. You see that? Fully loaded. Let's see how loud it gets under full CPU load. Let's give it some time. The test has been running for a while and I don't hear the fans get any louder, nor does the temperature get any hotter. Let's take a look at it, shall we? 100% utilization, 3.1 GHz clock speed, around 80 degrees Celsius CPU temperature and power consumption is at below 24 watts. Let's use the wireless microphone to listen to the noise. There you go. Surprisingly, it's not that much louder than when it gets whilst just, you know, web browsing. So that's interesting. And the temperature is climbing a little bit. It's at 81 degrees right now, but the room temperature is rising too. So yeah, the room temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. That is almost 79 degrees Fahrenheit fairly hot day. By the way, I'm using a display port to run this 4K monitor at 120 Hz. Check it out. 120. If you want more, 240 for example, 
Let's see what happens. Yeah. We're at 1440p now. So, no 4K to 40 hertz <laughs> on this thing. But 120 is good enough in my opinion. Considering the price that is, it is affordable after all. Compared to other more modern mini PCs that support higher refresh rates on 4K displays. For general day-to-day -day activities, this mini PC is nice and snappy. It launches all the apps quickly, navigates quickly, and even when I was updating Windows, which takes a long time, if you know what I mean, when you get a new device, yeah, a lot of updates. And even with that running, we still had plenty of uh, resources to just do whatever needs to be done. And yeah, that's basically why I love uh, the fact that this thing has 8 cores and 16 threads. Even though there are older cores, Zen 3 architecture, it is still pretty nice to have. They're quick. Now let's see if we can play some games on this thing. Let's start with something simple, like Hades. We are at 4K resolution. Let's see if uh, <laughs> it can handle Hades at 4K. It's not fantastic. Nah, I don't think this is a good experience. Below 30 FPS. We definitely have to lower the resolution. Let's try 1440p. That's better, but still, you know, kind of... Eh, 40 plus FPS. Not great, because during battles it will drop even further. I think we might be okay at 1080p. Let's try that. 1080p selected. Okay, 1080p is actually much better. Take a look at that. 100 FPS sometimes. <laughs> Beautiful. Let's go ahead and... Oh my god, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. There we go. Hmm, it's pretty smooth. It appears that if we just want to play simple games, then this integrated GPU is more than good enough, in my opinion, because take a look at this, 1080p resolution, 100-ish FPS. Yes, there are some dips to around 80, 90 sometimes, but damn. This is a mini PC, a cheap one. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Let's try something a little bit more intensive. Battlefield 1. We are at 1080p resolution using the lowest graphic settings. Low, low, low. Ambient occlusion SSAO. Let's take a look at the performance. My main concern is that uh, yeah, this thing has just 16 gigabytes of unified memory for everything. That is RAM and VRAM all together. And yeah, at the moment, <laughs> the performance is not good. 25 FPS and we haven't even entered any combat yet. Yeah, that is not great. Let's see if we can do something about it. Obviously, this game is a little bit too much for this integrated graphics. But let's see if uh, things will change if we disable ambient occlusion. Not really. We gained something like, I don't know, 1 FPS, maybe half of FPS. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, this kind of game is beyond the capabilities of this mini PC. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. I mean, it's uh, not a super powerful uh, GPU, is it? What about some Counter-Strike 2? 1080p, low settings, FSR disabled for the highest quality. 
Good old dust too. Let's go. Oh my god. Oh, let's see. Massive starter right there. No, it's uh, <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> Even though sometimes the FPS is at above 40. Nah, this is not a good experience, is it? Although right now, hmm, it is okay. Maybe, maybe it got better. Let's see. 35, nah. It's still stuttery. Even during fights, it stutters. So that's not good. Yeah, I can't play it like this. This is definitely not a pleasant experience. Unfortunately, it looks like uh, this mini PC can handle only the simplest games. I thought that CS2 was uh, simple enough, but no. Uh, it turns out that it's not. But you can still play some indie games like Hades, which are still a lot of fun. Let's check how fast Wi-Fi 6 is on this thing. Let's go. Latency 4 milliseconds, download speed 730 to 740 plus megabits per second. That's pretty good. Oh, 750. All right. And download. Yeah, roughly about the same. Oh. 800 plus, wow, okay, 840, 850, 860 maybe, yes, haha, <laughs> awesome. In terms of pricing, in the UK it's actually pretty good, 280 pounds, but in the US, at the moment, it is a little bit on the high side, 400 dollars. If I were you, I'd be on the lookout for a good deal on this thing during this Prime Day, which is happening fairly soon, from 8th to 11th of July 2025. Overall, I think that the Blackview MP100 is a pretty good mini PC to buy for just general computing tasks and some very light gaming occasionally. It's definitely miles better than some of those Intel mini PCs that are around and are cheaper, but yeah, this has much more power in terms of graphics as well as in terms of CPU. If you can find it at a low enough price, then I think it is well worth it. It has a lot of connections, wireless, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth, basically everything. And the main thing, it is not running loud. Yes, you can hear it, but I would describe that noise as subtle. It's definitely not the loudest mini PC I've heard. If you're interested in this thing, you can find it on Amazon at the links in the description below. Check it out. If you found this video helpful, then don't forget to reward my work with a like. It helps out a lot. Let me know in the comments what do you think about the MP100. And subscribe for more videos like this if you haven't already. It was I, Vadim. Until next time.